In this game, Bobby Fischer reveals the greatest strategic secret in chess, really the most important strategic idea in chess. Players like Yasser Sirawan have called it building. You might want to call it incrementalism. Basically, it's building the position piece by piece and focusing on small details. What do you do when your opponent is too good for you to just play bishop c4, queen f3, queen f7, checkmate? What happens when they know the opening theory, when they don't fall for basic traps, like Fischer's opponent in this game, Grandmaster Wolfgang Unziker? Well, Fischer shows us exactly how. Fischer has the white pieces. Grandmaster Unziker has black. This is in Zurich 1959. E4, E5, knight f3, knight c6, and bishop to b5. Fischer plays the Spanish opening, a very good opening uh, for this sort of building approach to chess. You notice he's not trying to sacrifice anything on f7. He's just trying to build in the center. Uh, a6 was played by Unziker. Bishop to a4, knight f6, castles. Bishop to e7, rook e1, b5, bishop b3, and d6, the main line of the uh, Rui Lopez. c3, giving his bishop a place to hide on c2 or, and also to expand with d4 later. Uh, castles and h3. Basically, all Fisher's trying to do is build a big center. He wants to play the pawn to d4, and he makes it so that the bishop can't pin the knight on f3, and the knight can then support the d4 advance. Knight to a5, going after the bishop, and clearing the way for the c-pawn to advance, bishop c2, and c5. Black gains space. The only downside is he does leave a hole on the d5 square that Fisher might be able to put a piece in later. d4, expanding in the center. Queen to c7. The queen adds more defense to the e5 pawn, and it can also potentially play down the c-file, and that opens up. Knight b to d2, bishop to d7, basically the main line at Chagorin. Black has a very good position. The only problems, again, are this, this weakness at d5, and the knight at a5 is not well positioned. Sometimes this knight will make a, a very long journey uh, even to the f7 square in some of these lines. Knight to f1. This Normal strategy, going uh, to g3 or e3. Rook f to e8 to give the bishop room to move back to f8, then even go to g7 later. Knight to e3, aiming at the d5 and f5 squares, and g6, basically allowing this bishop to later find Keto, but also controlling the f5 square so the knight can't jump into it. And here, Fisher played really his favorite move at the time, d e5, d e5 creating what we know as the focus formation. And what he's done is he's fixed the center. It's not mobile anymore. It can't become a lot of different formations. We know what formation, formation we're going to have. The real advantage for white is that this square is weak, but the same cannot be said for the this, this square in white's position. D4 is not weak. The C3 pawn controls it. If black wants to take advantage of a weak square, you have to play C4 and then exploit D3. Very hard to do. Knight to H2. So he's just focusing on that d5 square. He wants to play the knight to g4 and trade off the knight at f6, the only piece that currently defends the d5 square. Rook a to d8, placing the rook opposite the queen. Queen to f3 moves out of that, uh, the ray of that rook, but also um, moves over to the king side for potential attacking ideas. Bishop to e6, making sure d5 is protected by the rook and the bishop. Knight to h to g4, now the knights come off the board. He takes with the h pawn. So he's tried to exploit d5. So far, black has been able to defend it, but he hasn't really had any time to do anything with his offside knight at a5. So now Fisher has a new strategy. He wants to play the pawn to g5 and then the knight to g4, threatening to come into f6 or h6, which would basically force black to take the knight with his light squared bishop and then. Fisher would get the bishop pair. Again, just small things, not big tactics. Queen to c6, aiming at e4. Now g5, preparing that maneuver of knight to g4 to f6. The knight goes to c4. Of course, <laughs> Unziker would love for Fisher to just trade off that knight. He'd have a terrific position. Fisher's not going to do that. A knight goes to g4, aiming at f6, and that cannot be tolerated. Uh, the knight at f6 or h6 is unacceptable. So he must chop it off. And now Fisher has... A little bit of space, and the bishop pair here at c1 and c2, and we see Fisher's strategy slowly but surely working. And now earlier in a, a game, very similar position, and we actually went over it against a, a lower-level master, 
that player played knight to b6, which was the best move in the position, trying to prevent this a4 move. But here, Unziger plays f6, which is probably a mistake, um, because after gf6, bishop takes f6, in addition to the two bishops, Fischer's added a weakness at e5, and also these uh, dark squares are a little bit weaker than they otherwise would be. So this accumulation of small advantages is really working in his favor. a4, going after the queen side. The knight comes back to b6, ab5, ab5, and now he's added an open a file for his rook to his small advantages. Bishop to e3, rook to a8. Black wants to contest that open a file, doesn't just want to give it to Fisher. Rook plays the rook e to d1. Uh, if uh, rook takes a1, rook takes a1, rook to a8, trying to trade rooks, that was probably the best strategy. Uh, but Unziger instead plays the king to h8, wanting to get out of, I think, any potential attacks along this diagonal, although really wasn't threatened just yet. b3 keeps the knight out of c4. Bishop goes back to g7. And now queen to h4 is played. Um, here, the threat is rook takes a8. And if rook takes a8, rook to d8 check is really bad news. Um, if rook takes d8, queen takes, and it would just be mate in two, because the bishop would have to block, and that's mate. Uh, if instead, uh, bishop to f8 to prevent that, then rook takes a8, knight takes a8, queen to d8, pinning the bishop, and after king g7, bishop h6, and then we can just see he wins a pawn, and he's got a much, much better position. So that's the threat. Unziger plays bishop to f6 to keep the queen away from d8 in order to prevent that. And here Fischer makes a very interesting move. And the very top players often do this. They'll play moves that are surprising strategically. But he plays bishop to g5, um, not only giving up the bishop pair, but exchanging off his good bishop for his opponent's bad bishop. I mean, that bishop at f6 is not that great. It's blocked by the e5 pawn. Well, why is that? Well, after bishop takes, queen takes, he's aiming more and more at this weak pawn at e5, and also now these dark squares are even weaker than they were before, so he's traded one advantage for another. Rook takes a1, rook takes a1. The knight goes to d7 to defend the e5 pawn. Bishop to d1, maneuvering the bishop to g4 to exchange off uh, the key defender of the e5 pawn. The knight goes to f6 uh, to control the g4 square, since the bishop can't go there. But now, because of that, rook to a7. The rook takes the seventh rank, and uh, these, again, it just keeps pouring and pouring, uh, and there are all kinds of threats against Black's king. The queen goes, to, queen goes to d6, attacking the bishop at d1. That bishop just goes to e2 and attacks b5. And here, um, he plays rook to e7 to neutralize the rook, but uh, the pawn at b5 is attacked. What if he tries to prevent that with uh, c4? Then pawn takes queen to b6, attacking that rook. And if rook to f7, queen to f2 check would have been uh, an amazing move. Uh, king f2, knight to e4 check. Uh, but in this position, black would actually have been able to equalize uh, the game. Really quite astonishing. Also, queen to b6 to prevent the capture of this pawn at b5. But then you can just go ahead and take it anyway uh, because you can't recapture it because of queen to f6 would be mate. But uh, seeing this idea of queen to b6, again, that's a modern computer idea. You wouldn't expect anyone uh, to see that uh, at that level or at that time. Rook to e7, rook takes e7, queen takes e7, bishop takes b5. So all of that positional pressure, all of those little advantages has yielded a single pawn. But will it be enough in the end game? Bishop, uh, king to g7, excuse me, defending the knight and keeping the queen out of h6. Bishop goes back to e2. Queen to c7. Now black is attacking the pawn at e4. Queen to e3. Queen to a5. Stopping the advance b4, which is what white wants to play. Basically, I want to play b4, b5, b6, and march the pawn up the board. g3 gives the king a little bit of room, but also prepares the move f4, so he can create passed pawns in the center of the board as well as on the queen side. Queen to a3 attacks the b3 pawn. Now king to g2. Um, it's okay if the pawn goes because he can take the pawn at c5 in return, and now he's pr putting pressure on the uh, e5 pawn. So instead, uh, black plays the queen back to a5 to defend c5, queen to d3, queen to b6, and queen to c4. A perfect place for this queen. 
perfectly posted, defends everything, and prepares the b5, b4 push. Queen to c6 attacks e4, bishop to d3 defends it, queen to b6, and now b4. He's able to push the passed pawn. Takes, takes, knight to g4, aiming at f2. You always have to be uh, aware of tactics, but queen to c5 blocks it out. Uh, here, Unziger went ahead and traded queens. What if he tries to keep queens on the board, say, with queen to d8? Then bishop to e2 attacks the knight, and if knight f6, queen takes e5, and he would win another pawn. He'd be much better. So the queens are exchanged. King to f7, f4, creating a second passed pawn in the middle of the board. So he'll have to deal, black will have to deal with two passers. King to e7, king to f3 hits the knight. The knight goes to f6, and now bishop to b5. Notice how Fisher uses the pawn and the bishop to create a barrier that the king cannot pass. He does a tremendous job of doing that in this endgame. King to e6, bishop c4 check, king to e7, c6, advancing the pawn. Uh, if king to d6, then fe5 check, forks the king and the knight, and if the king takes c7 and the pawn cannot be stopped from queening. c6, knight to e8 is played instead to stop the advance of that pawn, but now f takes e5. And look at all of these squares. The king cannot go to any of those squares highlighted in green. The bishop and the pawns control all of those squares, severely limiting black's king's uh, mobility. h6, king to e3, knight c7, king to d4, threatening to play king c5, king b6, and push the knight away and advance the pawn, basically winning the knight. h5, the only chance black has, obviously, is to create a passed pawn on the queen side and to deflect uh, white's pieces. But king to e3, he comes back, and now he's threatening king to f4, and then he would just go to g5 and, and eat those two pawns. So you have to play g5, keeping the king out of f4. The bishop comes back to e2, attacking the h5 pawn. h4, gh4, gh4, bishop c4. And notice something very important. Fisher's king is within the square of this pawn. That's how you calculate whether or not a king can catch a pawn before it reaches the queening square. You draw a square. Uh, based on the number of squares away from the queening square. So four by four, the king's inside the box, it can stop the pawn. Knight goes to e8, king to f4, king d8, king to g4, king to c7. And now, instead of defending the pawn, he plays the bishop to f7, attacking the knight. And the knight only has one square it can go to because the king at c7 uh, takes away its other square. Knight to g7, king to h4, king c6, and king to g5. The threat is to play king to f6, and notice that the knight has absolutely nowhere to go. The knight will be lost, and so will the end game. And in this position, Unziker resigned a couple of moves, maybe king d7, king f6. He can play the knight here, but you take, take, then king to e6 is an easy win for white. A brilliant display of positional strategy from Bobby Fischer, something we can all learn from instead of trying to mate our opponents, particularly if they're strong right in the opening. Instead, step-by-step, step, incrementally build our position. Thank you for joining us at Chess Dog. See you again soon. Bye.